of the order for Thursday, January 17th. Um, it's a follow-up to our uh, Monday meeting uh, for budget, and the first item on the agenda is our reports, 2.1. And these three items coming are all aspects to uh, some grant requests that uh, staff have brought forward for information as it relates to budget considerations. So the first one is, uh, 2.1 is a, a grant a request for our airport runway extension uh, and that follows from that work that we had uh, previously. Councillor Jueka. I'll move that staff submit an application for grant funding for the airport runway extension project through the BC Air Access Program and further that council supports the project and commits 1.275 1.275 million for the city's share of the project. Thank you. Do I have a second? Councillor Buckstrom. Discussion. Now, we didn't, uh, we didn't have, because we didn't have these items and we have, uh, we had a process of we were going to make a motion to receive for discussion and then uh, give direction. And so do you, um, because we do have a motion, I'm, I didn't interject there, but uh, we will proceed with the motion as it is on the floor and has been seconded, but we'll, I'd like to do that following this so that we do have the discussion first before we give that direction. Anyway, we're good to have the dis discussion. Go ahead, Councillor Lecter. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you and probably to administration. So I know we have two more coming behind this one. Uh, which also have programs where we can access considerable map funding uh, to go along with it. If we, and I'm crystal ball gazing, if we were to pass all three, do we have the ability to fund the city's portion uh, that are required to put all of these applications forward? Yeah, go ahead. So Doc. three worship the airport um, funding is already considered and has been restricted and is set aside. Um, Council's direction to staff was in 2018 to complete the uh, engineering and get a project shelf ready and then to apply on a grant. We would have applied for the 90% funding um, for the airport runway extension. However, the engineering is not going to be completed by January 23rd. It's nip and tuck, so we've opted for the 75% funding in the February um, 18th deadline for that grant. So we have a little more time, that's why. Uh, as far as the um, paving program, uh, 2.3, this is a 2020 to 22, and we've allowed ourselves some flexibility to, to plan it over uh, different years and space these projects out. Uh, but primarily, uh, our goal is to have um, capital funding available for these projects. Now we're going through a budget process, and we're making some changes in order to increase the capital program. But in the past, uh, paving has taken that. Uh, priority. Okay, so that I'm going to take that as a yes. yes. We do have yeah. the ability. Thank yeah. you. At this Thank point, you. unless something changes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Thanks very much. You got there in a long way, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and the the bigger chunk of this uh, airport in 1.4 is already reserved in our uh, uh, reserve uh, pool from carry forward. Duncan? So, and the only point that I, I missed as I was dancing around that answer um, <laughs> is that in applying on these grants, we are um, committing to these projects and committing to essentially restricting uh, funding and making sure that funding is available yeah. if we are approved. So, for instance, for the airport, uh, the first one on, on the docket here, um, we're committing one point two or 1.5, I'd have to go back there. Uh, we're committing that funding is restricted and uh, needs to be available. And, and I don't know when we would hear back on this grant. It could be, you know, later, the, it'll be later this year. It could be six months or so before we hear. Um, similarly, we're committing to completing the parking lot at the Encana Event Center. And we're committing to funding $1.8 million in either 2020 or 2021. And further for the last one, uh, we're committing to that 96th Avenue and committing that million dollars to that project as well. So we are committed once we submit these grants. Thank you. And uh, the only point I wanted to make in regards to the airport is that our long term for me is the strategy of uh, is we look at that airport and how it functions, how it operates and how it's uh, um, supported uh, by 
either us alone within the city of Dawson Creek through our residential and business tax, or we try to move it to a different model that's more regional in approach. And so my thought was if, we, if we're looking to that in the long term, should we commit some of that fixed capital money that's solely from the city of Dawson Creek um, today, and we are committing to it to the benefit of the society, the city and our users, everybody benefits from it. It's just how you fund it today from fixed funds within your capital program from solely from the city of Dawson Creek or if you looked at a different model. The different model then also we don't know how that would impact grants and availability of grants. So it's an unknown moving it forward. Councillor Jabekov? Uh, just another point. I mean this is one grant that we're that we're you know making point of applying for. There's other opportunities as well, including going to the other municipalities that benefit from the airport, yeah. you know, to get support for it. So, you know, it's a process that we've started, and I think it's important to follow through with it, um, you know, and see where we come out. Sure. And further discussion on the motion? Anybody have any comments, questions? So we have 1.4 in our uh, capital reserve uh, carried forward from last year. Um, and uh, that would be uh, the funding source for our portion of this grant if we're successful. Councillor Lexton. Again, just uh, one follow-up question. I know our commitment will be $1.275 million. Does that mean it frees up the additional 125000 that we can then move from our commitment uh, to other capital projects? So it's through your worship. At this point, it looks like that. However, I'm still working on that cost estimate. I need the resolution at this point in order to sum uh, submit the grant, and I will tweak that number as the class uh, estimate comes in here okay. in February. So we're okay to submit this um, and have this resolution. Council supports it, but you'll probably see me come back with a finer number uh, within the next month. Okay. Good. Thank you. Further discussion? Further comments? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. So 2.2 is the letter from the grant writer regarding request for uh, a, a grant uh, opportunity within the Canada Infrastructure Program. And I, like I said, I'd like to move forward if we can on the council make a, a motion that we receive for discussion or uh, receive for information and then we can move it forward that way with discussion if that's the desire. Councillor Jovetko? I'll move for discussion. Thank you. Second? Councillor Earl. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Jabeka. So this is new to me, I think. Uh, I haven't seen this project before, although I know it's necessary. I've mm -hmm. seen the results of the old paving job. <laughs> and uh, is is there budget or, or is there money in the five-year plan for it? No. Through your worship, I'd have to ask Kevin where this fits within the five. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Councillor Wilbur's on the line or no? No, we couldn't oh. get her. Good morning. So, Sri Your Worship, in regarding to the parking lot project, what we've done is, is we have put some money aside in the five-year plan because we knew we had to do some repairs there. What we did in the 2018 budget operationally is we had put some uh, planning money aside to go in and take a, a bit of a bigger look at parking lot, parking itself, access, fire lanes, a number of things. So that work was done. Then out of that work kind of drove additional capital um, requirements and, and I say that is what we wanted to have as a plan that uh, knowing that it would be a long-term plan to chip away at and do some work but at least we knew we were heading in a cohesive direction so we've got an overall plan for the site now and that's kind of what is presented in this grant application so it's a big number and that's the you know would be the uh, you know the full the full build out and would be you know great but we know that if, if we're going to do the work ourselves, we're going to have to chip away at that over a long period of time. So we've got some money set aside, but not that complete amount in the five year. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. Councillor Earl? So just, um, and I'm keeping in mind, I'm still fairly new at this. So this uh, funding of $5,100,000, five um, that comes through, does that have uh, strings attached to it or a timeline around mm -hmm. when the full project would going to have? So we would. You mentioned this kind of an overall plan, cohesive plan we got that you could do in phases. Yep. But if we were to get this funding, that would constrict that timeline to a certain completion date. Yeah, and I believe the grant—it's over two years yeah. within the 
within the grant, we have the, the work scheduled over two years. Yeah. Councilor Lexton? It's just speaking to this. <clears throat> My first thought is I didn't think the paving of that lot is that old. So I'm a little concerned that we're looking at six million dollars or five point one million dollars to fix something that is a significant concern uh, you know we it, the city and the surrounding area uh, built this event center it does wonderful things for our city uh, all aspects of it but to see this kind of capital required in a short time at least in my mind in a parking lot that you know isn't built for the heavy trucks and all of that. This is general parking for people that attend. Concerns me. And can I get, maybe if administration has anything, when it was done, was there something overlooked? Was it not done properly? Was the base not prepared? It just, I'm at a bit of a loss here. And right now, I'm not in, in a supportive position to spend $5.1 million on a parking lot that I think should have lasted more than five or 10 years. So. Yeah. So our our portion of this grant is one one point yeah. eight. Yeah. The province is five million for a total of seven. Um, and then uh, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, some of the changes that occurred at the uh, multiplex throughout the project as it ran into some of its budget implications. The parking lot is one of those areas where the original plan and the city paving that parking lot changed to working with a contractor and and some land transfers and um, Kevin do you have anything else you can yeah, add to that? so um, I can say that there was uh, exactly that there was uh, an agreement with a local contractor who did the work on the city's behalf and in exchange the city had um, agreed to swap some land at the airport um, and so that was what happened and all I wasn't involved with the construction of it, but I can tell you now that I've been involved in having to go in and repair it, that any time that we've dug into that parking lot, and when I, s the, the main road in is, is good, but the, the parking area itself where you see it breaking up, I can tell you that there is a very little structure, if any at all, underneath the asphalt, and that's why it's falling apart. Go ahead. I guess in just following up, I, um probably asking a question I know the answer to there's no recourse to go back on the individual who performed the work for us um, I had that conversation a few years back with um, yeah okay Councillor DeVecca I'll be supporting the motion I I guess uh, you know infrastructure is important it's one of the things that's really critical we've we've identified that in our uh, priorities um, we've got a $7 million project. If the grant comes through, it's at a cost of $1.8 million to the city. I think it's good economics, so uh, if we're successful in getting the grant, I think it's worthwhile proceeding with the project. Yeah, I, I think the aspect of why it's forward now is the opportunity of this uh, government of BC um, bringing forward the um, uh, grant uh, community culture and recreation infrastructure grant and when it popped up for me at the regional district uh, as one another community applying for it at 90 percent dollars I thought we want to get in right because if there's some projects that we have that anytime you can leverage and get 10 20 cent 25 cent dollars for capital and um, I agree with Councillor Lexstrom I think all of us do of, wait a minute it's 10 years old and we got to pay se put seven million bucks into it uh, something wrong with that picture but at the same time uh, if we can fix this infrastructure and put a long-term fix into it that eventually you're going to need to do, then um, I think we can leverage some grant money. I'm in favor of uh, doing it. So, Councillor uh, Just a quick question uh, to Kevin. What the additional gravel lot, where, where is that going to be located? Um, so there was, a, in, the, in the overall plan, there was talk about uh, an overall parking area just to the east of Lakota parking area okay. just because that is a bit jumbled um, and not really structured that well so to move some of the trailers and bigger equipment just slightly to the east because um, we need to maintain fire access along the sides of the buildings and, and that um, I believe that's probably the one you're thinking of there was some okay. also expansion just on the 
north side pool side but i yeah um, that was paved though and that happened yeah. a few years back yeah okay. So. okay thank you motion councillor jebeko i'll move that staff submit an application for grant funding for the in Canada event center parking and access upgrades project through icip community culture and recreation infrastructure program and further that council supports the project and commits 1.868094 yeah. million for the uh, city share of the project. Thank you. Second? Councillor Earl? Further discussion? You ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Councillor Lexterm opposed? Uh, item three is we have a letter from the grant writer regarding a request for council support for grant opportunities um, for all community infrastructure 96th Avenue paving upgrade. So motion to receive or motion to discuss? Motion, Councillor Jack. Uh, motion to discuss. Thank you. Second, Councillor Kemp. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Floor is yours. Go ahead. So is this... Uh, 8.9 million, is that considering any revenue from the landowners? So through your worship, no, this, this is just construction costs estimates that we've done. Uh, and this uh, includes underground where needed uh, based on our master plans, uh, street lighting, sidewalk, road construction, whole thing. So it's a complete rebuild of the whole street. Absolutely. And it's consistent with the uh, paving plan that we did in 2014? Yeah, I mean, there's portions of it. Uh, what we were looking at is, is um, in regards to the granting, was, was a road that's in need, and it's a large project, um, and 96 is. And uh, there's different parts of 96 that are better or worse than other, but as a, as a complete project, it, it does need to be done. and. It's definitely identified into the plan into the future. Just one other question. So with this grant application and the one for the parking, uh, they go to the same organization. Are they competing against each other? Mm -hmm. Okay. So through your worship, our understanding is there's they're separate streams and they, they don't compete. However, our, my understanding is also that sometimes they take that into account. Okay. Councillor Lexter? Thank you, Your Worship, and really through you to Kevin. When I look at this, $10 million is a, a lot of money, 8 to 17th, and I mean, it's, is there a reason to the extent of that cost? Is this a result of us maybe not having acted on it maybe over the last three or four or five years just because of capital money restrictions possibly? Are we now, what would a recap of that cost if you have any idea in, yeah. in a rough number so if you're just doing a recap obviously you're talking about a percentage of of what you're dealing with you're just dealing with asphalt costs yeah. um and so just to back up a little bit if we were going to do this project the next step for us would be to go in and do ge some drilling and geotechs and that's going to then tell us unequivocally whether it's a full dig out or if we got enough structure in the road that we can just pave it so um then that might change our costs you know, so right now we've assumed worst case scenario, mm -hmm. dig it all out, rebuild it. Um, but there may be portions that you can do that. Um, Sorry, and Kevin, we also know that our utilities in that area are in need of some upgrades, right. and that's part of the reason why it's a, a full dig out and a full, yeah, a full upgrade because we know we're going to be digging into that. Okay. I mean, ninety sixth itself, if, if it's lasted, you know, probably well beyond its its life expectancy, you know, in a lot of areas, because in my 23 years here, I haven't been involved in any paving in it. So, and it was done well before that. So as a main collector across your community, you know, you're really 20, 25 years is, is probably it. And um, yeah, so it's, you know, it's there. It's done well. All right, I'm, I appreciate that. I mean, the reason I asked the question is I do think that uh, on occasion we've gone out to do streets where it hasn't been adopted by the 
owners of the homes. Okay. And that's fine. I mean, that's democracy in a sense. But then as the years go by, rather than being a $2 million project, it then becomes yep. a 4 or $6 million mm -hmm. project. And yet the homeowner still pays the same from the day they turned it down. So yep. I think we're going to have to address that as a council as we move forward. At some point, um, if people don't want to fund it, that's fine. But in the future, if there's added costs, I think they're going to have to be yep. borne by the, the homeowners in that area versus the general taxpayer. There's it's a, a tough discussion but I think it's one we're going to have to have with the community as we move forward because it's fair to say we have a lot of our residential streets in need of hopefully a recap and not to the point where we need a full dig yeah so, so paving through your worship you know paving and maintenance of that definitely you can extend the life if you do proper maintenance in those first 5, 10, 15 years, you can get more life out of it. If you let that go, your costs will be exponentially increased because you go from, like you say, a possible recap to eventually where it completely fails and you're into a dig out. And, and we, have, we have examples of that, and everybody does. It's just it's uh, being able to allocate enough resources to maintain that at a level. All right. Councillor Jebeko. So is part of this uh, project attributed to upgrading the sewer and water infrastructure like what is the age of the the uh, sewer and water infrastructure there uh, right off the top I couldn't say I, I I know we look through our master plans so when we do these estimates I have my my staff go through and say okay if we're paving a road what does it say about everything that we know underneath it does it need to be replaced is it and so we've have some that's definitely identified in our master plans to say the sanitary line needs to be relined, replaced, upsized, whatever it may be. So we look at that. Um, you're going to have uh, water infrastructure, you know, in there that's anywhere from 40 to 70 years old, and and same with sewer infrastructure, right? So, and it is included in this. Yeah, we're trying to take that cohesive, comprehensive approach to say if we're we're going over top of it with new asphalt, let's be conscious about what's underneath it because I don't want to come back two, three, five years later and dig it up. Go ahead. So again, I, you know, I'll be supporting it. I, I guess leveraging uh, a nine million dollar project with one million dollar investment is good economics, mm -hmm. <laughs> considering, <coughs> you know, I mean, you're doing the whole ball of wax with it. You're uh, upgrading you know, the utility infrastructure as well. Mm -hmm. you, are you making that by way of a motion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I'll move that staff submit an application for grant funding for the 96th Avenue Paving Upgrades Project through the ICIP Rural and Northern Communities Program and further that Council supports the project and commits $998,500 for the city share of the project. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Laxton, discussion? Go ahead, Just a quick one, and I will support this, and uh, you know, I want to be clear, I think leveraging money is good, but let's not forget it's our money we're leveraging, mm -hmm. whether it's provincial tax dollars coming back or federal tax dollars or city tax dollars, but the question I would have, are we going to pursue a contribution from the homeowners on that street? Because I think that should be part of this. Yeah. Uh, I know it's a connector and a, a well-used street. Maybe we could look at our policy based on those type of things, yeah. but some form of contribution as other residents contribute to their paving would be in order, I believe. So through your worship, we have a policy around local area service. Um, I do not believe that 96th Avenue is exempt. I'd, I'd have to go back and look at the policy because we do have some identified as being exempt where we would not. Um, so and at that time we could look at it and, and uh, council could have some input on whether that policy remains the same or desire to change it. To okay. hear your worship, the policy as a whole um, needs to, to come before this council and, and council will have to take a look at that. I mean, there's been discussion about roads that were turned down uh, in the past that we've spent more money maintaining and try to try to keep those roads drivable than we probably would have received for the asphalt. And having a look at that, there's also the discussion about um, roads that have become arterials or, or become bus routes. And 
are getting for, far more traffic than local traffic and how that fits within the policy. So it, it needs a look. Yeah. We, we absolutely, and that's a great point. We had a, a real good discussion. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before about uh, local area sewer improvement and that whole bylaw and, and the fairness and equity of it in terms of for our homeowners and then the additional cost that's coming to us because somebody turns it down and then all of a sudden we're faced with not a million bucks, it's five million. And so that whole policy needs to be reviewed and it's a, a really good point about that. So. All right. I look forward to that. Thank you. Further discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And um, so do you want to make a follow-up motion behind that that would bring that policy back on our local area service improvement uh, for? Uh, because uh, I don't think ever it, we ever included and considered infrastructure grants that we might apply as another component in there as well, right? Okay. And that probably should be a consideration for our bylaw, our policy. I would so move that, Your Worship, if I had a seconder, that we bring the uh, policy back for review. Thank you. Councillor Kent? Discussion? Um, and we'll do that, obviously, through 19 somehow, because I think we are reviewing policy. So. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, so that gets rid of and through, not rid of. Not rid of. <laughs> <laughs> gets rid of those things. <laughs> that uh, concludes those uh, three reports, and now we need a motion to recess to close. Move Councillor uh, Earl, second to Councillor Dvekoff. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. So we'll take five minutes on uh, recess to close. <laughs>